Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the Edo A20 and because this is a newly released model and there are not a lot of details about it today I'm going to try to cover as much as possible and we are going to try to go into details about everything going also to try to be as short as possible so I'm going to go right away to the technical specifications because this is sold for the European market it comes standard with 200 watts of power and limited to 25 kilometers per hour with only assisted mode working but that's the normal part because on this bike you get a very a smart controller here called the S866 and you can program this and it has a lot of parameters that you can set up so you can increase the power from 250 watts to 350 watts and you can increase the speed from 25 kilometers per hour to about 35 kilometers per hour through speed checked with the GPS here. The transmission system is uh, equipped with a Shimano rear uh, gear set it has uh, seven speeds and those come uh, equipped with an indexed uh, shifter here you get dual brake system with 160 millimeter disc front and rear in front you also get uh, suspension the rear wheel doesn't have suspension but you get suspension in the seat post here and that uh, smooths out some of the bumps from the road the bike also comes equipped with a light with four LEDs that are rather powerful and an electric horn which is pretty good. You also get a nice USB charger here that has this cap here and when you remove it you have the USB port there and you can charge your mobile phone. In the accessory box you also get some tools, manuals, air pump and a phone holder which I haven't installed because I have installed the GPS here for the today's test. Frame build quality is pretty good, welds are nicely made. You get this handle which makes it very easy to carry around and a very interesting thing is here on the seat post you get a nylon sleeve which is a first thing seen until today uh, and this not only makes the adjustment of the seat post really nice but this will prevent scratching the seat post when you adjust this uh, of course you don't adjust it daily but uh, you know how it happens when you adjust it it falls down inside and you scratch it all up and then you take it and it's full of scratches with that nylon sleeve there this won't happen and now I'm going to also to show you some details about the mud guards. The mud guards are very narrow and they have this very tall side here. And you can see here the wheel is partially under the mud guard. And you have to pay attention when you first ride this bike to adjust the mud guard so that the sides of the mud guard will not hit the tire because this will vibrate a bit and if it's not centered over the wheel this can touch the wheel and make funny noises or you can break it for the front suspension you get about four centimeters of travel and you have the same thing here you need to check the mud guard so that it's centered over the tire because if this is somewhere installed a bit uh, off centered from the wheel then the wheel might hit on the side here and make funny noises or break this otherwise this suspension will not bottom out well, when this is limited here the wheel will not hit the mud guard because the mud guard there has more space uh, the wheel will not even touch here this metal arch so you get more than five centimeters here than the travel that it four centimeters here so regardless of how much weight you have and how much you abuse the front suspension when it bottoms out it's not going to hit anything because everything is further than the wheel can travel and when I was talking to you that this bike is really well made up I'm going to show you something
And as you can see, there is no funny suspension noise, no rattle, nothing. You can only hear the chain and the tensioner jumping there and a bit of the front suspension, but that is normal when it's not loaded because it jumps back into position because there's nothing to push up. And uh, it's so silent because of this. Actually, the battery is the thing that rattles inside because this is a removable battery in, in a metal case. Uh, the bike is made from aluminum. This is slightly smaller than the hole in uh, the frame, but you can easily sort it out with putting some uh, small uh, adhesive pads. Everything you can use from duct tape. You get the idea. You just put some pieces of material there and there's not going to be any kind of rattle even with the battery inserted. And because I took the battery out, I'm also going to show you something else. It's the locking mechanism here. This will not only lock the battery in the frame, but this also has the function of ignition switch. And this will cut the power, so if it's in off position, you can take the key. You can lock this into the frame of the bike, like this. And now I can remove the key, it's locked, and it's on off. So the bike will not have any kind of power and to ride it I need to put the key in on position while this is still locked and the key is not coming out so you are going to ride with the key inserted into the battery and into on position otherwise it will not start and then of course you have the unlock option to remove the battery from the frame Another thing I like is the battery it has specifications it tells you that it has 10 for 10 0.4 amps and it uses China brand cells they don't uh, uh, lie you with uh, LG Panasonic or Samsung although they have options here so probably in the future they are going to release larger batteries with better cells and it uses cells that are rated to 2600 milliamps uh, each cell and they have a 5C discharge rate so this uh, works out pretty good for an electric bike battery and if you want to get into more details um, if you multiply 4 with 2600 milliamps then means it has exactly uh, 10.4 amps so this uses uh, 10 series 4 parallel battery configuration so this kind of checks out the cells capacity with overall battery capacity shape weight all uh, checks out so this uh, is probably 99.9 percent .9 accurate and uh, true genuine not uh, fake capacity A uh, thing that I don't like, or maybe this bike had a problem, they have uh, missed putting here a small pad on which this will stop, so when you close it, it will not hit the frame and the paint. Uh, you just need to put something. They did install this on the handlebar, and they could install such thing also on the frame to protect the paint. When I've got the bike, I had to adjust the uh, rear derailleur just a bit. Uh, it was kind of jumping between two gears. So I have used this uh, cable tensioner here. Uh, I don't remember if I have tightened up or loosened up the cable, but it was fixed uh, very quickly. I haven't adjusted the limiter screws because the limits were okay. Uh, it goes from the smallest gear to the biggest gear without any problems and it will not jump from them uh, it only was a problem with the tensioning of the cable and uh, it was very simple to adjust I have also slightly adjusted the brakes they were pretty good uh, but uh, the rear one was touching a bit the, the disc brake on one side so I have adjusted that while the front one was a bit uh, uh, too uh, slacked so I have tightened up the cable a bit and now it breaks pretty good before we start the test ride I'm going to tell you a bit about the working mode so when you get the bike you are going to have uh, 
four modes in total. You have zero, you have one, two, and three. Zero is for non-electric power, acceleration doesn't work, assisted mode with the pedals doesn't work. Then you get the level one here. They are all called assist, but uh, you get this uh, low, medium, high. Actually, on first gear, assist or low, you get the assisted mode working and it has one single level but I'm going to discuss about that a bit later. Then you get mode 2 and mode 3 and those are actually speed limits for the full electric mode and you get the acceleration working only on mode 2 and on mode 3. On mode 2 you are limited to something like uh, legal 25 kilometers per hour but I have unlocked the bike and now with the third assist mode here, I can go up to about 35 kilometers per hour. I was telling you about the assisted mode. This bike with this controller has a lot of features that you can adjust. For instance, you can adjust the delay it takes for the controller to start assisting you. So when you turn the pedals, it will wait, wait, wait and turn on. You know that from Fidu, it's horrible because it has a delay of a few seconds sometimes and it's annoying. On this bike, you can set that very low like I did on this. And and it picks up your uh, pedaling almost instantly. Then you also have things such as going into the full electric mode here and you can adjust the acceleration power of the bike. Uh, it comes from the factory with kind of a medium acceleration or something like low to medium because it has around five levels. And for the delay you get about 24 levels so you can also adjust it as you wish. Then you also have some nice other instructions here, indicators, sorry. Uh, but actually the most important one is the voltage. So no more guesswork with how many battery bars I still have. So you get this voltage right now. The battery is almost full at 41.849 volts. It's a 42 battery when it's fully charged. That's how a 36 battery looks like. So you know exactly how much power you have in the battery. So that's really cool. You can also adjust the low voltage cutout. So you can protect the battery, you can increase that, you can monitor. It's very smart. About the controller, I'm going to do a separate video and I'm going to explain you all the parameters and how to do other things such as disable the non-zero start because also when you get the bike, you need to pedal first and then the full electric mode will be available or the assist mode will work. Otherwise, uh, you are going to push the throttle here and nothing will happen, so you need to adjust that also. And now let's see how this rides. And I mean assisted mode. And you can hear the motor humming right away. Pretty good. And because I was telling you about uh, the suspension noise that it's not there and it doesn't bottom out, I'm going to start with this test right away. And I'm not going to be very gentle. And as you can uh, hear, that's only minimal noise, noise that is normal for this kind of road on a bike but there is no annoying rattling from the suspension because that's the battery. It only rattles a bit and you put that things that those pad on the bike and there is no more problem. Also, uh, there is no bottoming out of the front suspension to hit the mudguard because you actually need to adjust the mudguards first so that they don't rub on the wheel in the first place. So those are now sorted. Here's another bump that will make the suspension bottom up and there's no problem there the bike is really maneuverable it feels nimble and it feels more uh, stable than uh, the smaller wheels from the Fido D2 or the L2 with those small, very small wheels 
sometimes you have the tendency of turning the handlebar too fast and you actually are able to rotate too much and uh, can cause a crash this is very stable feels pretty good the seat suspension works really nice uh, although I have over 90 kilograms and when I stay on the seat I can feel it that it goes down with me and it stays there compressed but it's not going all the way down and when you go over bumps it's kind of a spring that makes you jump a bit uh, it's pleasant it doesn't break your butt anymore uh, it's not like having rear suspension but it's a nice I'm not going to say gimmick because it's not a gimmick it does something it works it's a suspension and uh, it doesn't make any fine, funny noises it's really nice to have and it doesn't change the right characteristics and I like that the front suspension as you can see it's simply quiet uh, it's doing the job with that 4 cm of travel and that jump there was again compressing the front suspension almost to the maximum no noise and as you can see there is still no rattle from the suspension let's see the top speed now so I'm doing 30 already and the GPS is it's kind of a small difference about 2 kilometers per hour and I'm out of running track so I'm going to try to get more speed somewhere else let's try that again and I have to break with the uh, top speed uh, sorted out and with the uh, comparison between the GPS and the display here also sorted out as you can see there is something like one two kilometers per hour difference so when this is 35 this is 32 uh, then uh, the GPS has a small delay, it picks up the speed, so it's pretty accurate, this doesn't lie, I like the voltage indicator, very good. Uh, now let's talk about the assisted mode, so this bike has only one single assisted mode and you cannot adjust the uh, power, the gears like you have on other bikes when you have low, medium, high assistance and so on, this only has one simple assisted mode. So if you pedal, you can hear the motor, it starts to run and I like the fact that with the settings on the lowest delay, it's less than half of turn of a pedal to start the assisted mode. Uh, it's hard to see, but uh, it works really nice that way. And the assisted mode works a bit different from other e-bikes. It's truly an assisted mode because it has a target to power the bike with a limited amount of power up to 25 kilometers per hour. Uh, this means that the bike will never achieve 25 kilometers per hour uh, using things such as uh, ghost pedaling. So if I pedal very, very, very slow, the bike will go to a speed something like 10 kilometers per hour, 12 kilometers per hour, and then it will not go faster than that because I'm not putting any kind of effort and the bike is not putting more effort than it should and that means that you have to actually change gear and to have some resistance in the pedals and put some effort into pedaling and with that you can increase the speed and you can feel that it's more easy to go in assisted mode 
then in zero power mode so the assistive mode does a very good job of assisting you because if I turn off the assistant I now feel a lot more resistance into the pedals and if I go into assistive now the bike goes really well and you can hear the motor humming doing the job and I'm doing almost effortlessly 80 kilometers per hour and it feels really relaxing pleasant and I also can tell you that I have detected the first annoying problem and that is the pedals especially the left pedal the pedals you see are folding and they fold really nice very quick and they look sturdy resistant and they don't have any kind of play in their uh, shaft which is good but when you unfold them they have this annoying movement up and down so each time when you put your force on the pedal and make a turn this will move up down up down up down and the same goes to the other pedal and it doesn't make a squeaking noise but it makes a rather annoying repeating clanking noise so each time when you rotate the pedal rotates from one side to the other it will click and that one will click and you get click and click and click and click and those are really annoying but they are cheap pedals you can replace them anyway and maybe not all the bikes do that maybe just mine the brakes although are regular disc brakes mechanical disc brakes with cable and they are uh, uh, pulled from one single side so they have one single uh, brake pad that moves and it pushes the disc and the disc bends and pushes on the stationary pad so it's the same brake system that you get on the little bikes they work pretty good although I have adjusted them before uh, riding the bikes so they do a good job in stopping they don't make any kind of funny noises for now and they have good modulation so I can uh, brake progressively and uh, I can also brake very fast in case of an emergency the bike will stop without any kind of problems or so pretty powerful and that's also because the discs are very good at 160 millimeters they are pretty decent and they have good fighting force on the pads and now it's time for a climb test so I have uh, chosen a very steep hill and now I have selected the third gear which is maximum uh, power for electric mode the hill starts from here I'm going to start from standstill I have adjusted power to maximum and let's go no pedaling here So I'm doing about 80 kilometers per hour, but that's very good because all of my e-bikes and low power scooters, electric scooters, barely can go up this hill without uh, getting some momentum. So from a standstill, this goes very well uh, with my Xiaomi M3. Uh, 65 uh, scooter uh, sometimes I actually have to use my feet to give it power to go uphill because those 250 watts are not sufficient for getting up but you can always use the pedals and that will improve the situation a lot more so the bike goes even steep hills without any kind of problems it's not the fastest but you cannot accept going it too fast with even 350 watts because that's not so much another thing that I like is uh, how uh, good this uh, rolls by itself so it has minimum resistance because it has a geared motor with a one-way clutch system uh, you can pedal and ride this bike as a normal bike 
uh, you will not feel any kind of extra resistance it's like just pedaling a normal bike without having a motor an extra weight from the battery and this goes on and on simply with no kind of problem and this makes it very efficient from uh, the energy point of view you can ride it for periods of time without any kind of electric power another thing i need to talk about are the gears the shifter works really nice after you adjust it and you get seven gears they are evenly spaced out and this has kind of a rather small uh, crank gear and it would do a lot more better if you have used something like a 58 tooth uh, gear because uh, you will find yourself very easy pedaling for nothing because when the bike goes over 25 kilometers per hour and you are going for 30 kilometers per hour on the seventh gear the lowest rear gear uh, it's uh, not uh, high geared enough for uh, pedaling because you are no longer able to pedal that fast to keep up with the speed of the bike so having a different ratio would have improved things a lot more so that was for today i hope that uh, you have uh, came to some conclusions after my review uh, now it's time for some uh, pros and cons beside what you have observed in the video uh, I forgot to mention this uh, look how nice they did with the cable so they have added wrap on them everywhere also here on the underside of the bike they don't use only zip ties and small hooks here they actually have some metal parts welded and the cable goes through those and they are very well secured and they even went the extra with putting here a small adapter and not letting this wire dangle around very nice routing there another advantage is uh, made by the wheels because they are solid they don't have spokes they will not uh, break the spokes and they are uh, rather resistant uh, they are proven from other bike models you don't have troubles with them from the comfort point of view this is very good because uh, it has adjustable uh, seat it has suspension in the seat it has a very good saddle with lots of uh, padding so it's comfortable then the handlebar is adjustable on height and then you have this one and you can quickly rotate the handlebar and this has a slight curvature so you can adjust this with the curvature upward inward it's your choice so very good and uh, if you want uh, the brakes and all of that a bit tilted there or there you don't have to adjust all of them you just release this clamp and rotate the whole assembly which is a great idea also you can take it off very quickly in case you need to do something like modifying or upgrading it it's a very nice design on the con list i'm going to put the pedals because they are making horrible noise also i'm going to add this because you know this from the fidu is the thing that stays on the bike only for 10 minutes i have added a lot of glue to keep it there into position and the glue even doesn't want to hold it in place so probably i'm going to lose that nonetheless it's on the con list on the pro list yet again another pro is the front suspension as you can see here there are some marks with some uh, oil or vaseline from inside of the shock here and you can see that this has went up to there so this has bottomed out and it didn't uh, stop my wheel from spinning and it didn't hit the mud guard so suspension does its job takes the whole travel distance there and even out the shocks on the neutral list i'm going to add the transmission transmission is very good but only if you are not going faster than 25 kilometers per hour because going faster than that this is not enough for maintaining a high speed you are going to end up pedaling like a hamster too fast to keep on uh, the speed so 10 
30, 35 kilometers per hour, that's a speed that you are going all to run only on electric. Another pro is the headlamp with four LEDs. This is very powerful and it's not going to blind the traffic drivers, but uh, with this installed, you can actually ride in the night time on a street and you are going to see uh, the obstacles pretty good. So it's a far better headlamp that uh, I have seen until now on bikes that you don't need to actually change with something better. On the cone list, you are only going to get a reflector on the rear, so I have added my own LED lamp here for a stop. That is to be 100% legal in uh, Europe. You might be able to wire something from the controller with the headlamp there to add something here, a small red light, but that's another story. I'm just putting this as a cone because there's no red light. Also another uh, pro and also a warning is the USB charger here. This is uh, really good, really useful. You can charge your GPS, you can charge your mobile phone. Uh, it's very useful if you are doing, uh, for instance, delivery with your bike because you are going to always charge your phone. I don't know if you can see on the camera, it has a blue LED inside that it shows uh, that it's working uh, and here comes the caution this is always active so even if my bike is now off this works and I can still charge all my devices with it and if you leave it that way it will in a few months slowly fully discharge your battery or until the BMS will uh, uh, initiate cutoff and to avoid that you just have to turn off the power with the key and now the battery is disconnected from this also and it's not going to drain power so that's the caution when you don't use the bike especially for a longer period of time just turn off the power and you are uh, safe with that so that was it for now be sure to follow my next uploads where I'm going to treat this uh, I'm going to show you how to unlock the bike how to adjust the delay how to adjust the power and everything so it's going to do uh, it's going to be a separate video for this I'm also going to show you how to adjust this uh, you see I have a weird looking gap here and I'm going to explain that uh, on a camera and you can see here this thing it's moving uh, when you get the bike, the stem is not installed, you need to install it and then you need to check this, it's a kind of a tricky situation here, you need to adjust this and to lock it into position uh, and I'm going to do also a video on that and explain you what's happening there but it's easy to do and very good to do, especially when you get the bike at the beginning so you don't have to take this apart again just to adjust it. Until next time, see you and bye bye!